So, right, I'm going to get straight into it. So today this uh, research has been re revealed that 9 in 10 uh, dummies are contaminated with bacteria. Firstly, can I ask you, uh, Dr. Ronald, can you tell us a bit more about the research which you carried out and uh, what you found when you looked more closely at the bacteria on dummies? Absolutely. Um, well, we did two sort of surveys. We looked at a survey where you took nice uh, unused dummies and dropped them on the floor and found out what sort of bugs you'd pick up from the environment. And then we looked at a whole selection of dummies which came from directly from babies. Now, the issue about the ones from babies and also the ones from the environment is we picked up about 10% which were grossly contaminated. Now, we're not interested uh, in sort of low numbers of bugs, um, a few hundred on a particular specimen. What we're interested in is those ones that are really grossly contaminated and uh, that's the ones we focused on. And in the gross contamination, um, we found uh, about 16% uh, were grossly contaminated uh, or heavily contaminated with skin or faecal bacteria. And this were the ones that the babies had been using. Right. And I understand uh, a part of the process, um, you had to incubate the dummies for five days in order to measure the bacterial load of each dummy contained. So what were some of the nasties, some of the more, you know, horrible bacteria which you discovered after uh, the incubation period? Uh, can I just sort of mention the fact we didn't incubate the dummies for five days. Uh, what we do is we take the dummy and we put it onto bacteriological media, very specific media, uh, sort of to feed the bugs. And then we incubate the plates for uh, five days because some of these organisms, because they come from the outside, they sometimes take a little bit uh, longer to grow. So what we actually found there is that in the 10% of organisms, especially the ones from the babies, um, the most common organism was a, a thing called Enterococcus faecalis. So with the word faecalis, you can imagine where it comes from. It normally comes from the, uh, from the gut. So these were uh, heavily contaminated with these particular organisms. And uh, the worrying thing about these particular organisms are sometimes they cause infections, sometimes they don't, but they can also be multiple drug resistant which, as you know, is an issue in these days. Yes. And where, where did you find were the worst places to drop a dummy in terms of what they would pick up? Um, well, funnily enough, <laughs> uh, if, you, if you dropped it in the kitchen, it uh, wasn't a good idea. I don't know why in this particular survey. Normally we find, uh, when we do surveys of looking for bugs in different environments, we find kitchens are pretty clean. For some reason or other, um, the kitchen seemed to be one of the worst places to drop these dummies, as well as, of course, uh, something like outside in, in a park isn't a good idea. Yeah, and can firstly, I just need to clear this up because it's not here on the press release. Is the survey? I know it was. Uh, I think it was done in London. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, well, basically, the dummies, and I think my colleague can tell you where they all came from. Uh, the dummies came from different parts of the country. You know, right. Yeah. Sorry, Tess. You, you go on. Tell us where whereabouts did you collate the dummies from in order to? Well, the the dummies actually were from a from across the UK in a variety of locations and from a variety of healthy babies of different age ranges. So we really looked you know, a sample um, that was as representative as we possibly could for the sample size. Right, and I understand, uh, Tess, that you are an expert in dummy sterilisation? Yes, uh, Milton, um, you know, sterilising experts, and um, we can offer parents advice um, on how to protect their babies, both keeping their soother sterile and also generally protecting their, um, their environment to prevent them getting unwell. So what, what can parents do to minimise the risk of the children? You know, what, can, what are the best ways to sterilise a dummy? I'm sure there's some parents who maybe think they're doing it right, but maybe haven't, you know, don't know the, the best way to do that. The best thing you can um, for parents to use is a, a portable soother steriliser, so uh, a little pod that they can take um, around with them and they can attach it to their buggy so they've always got a steriliser on hand. Um, it's often not enough just to sterilise it at home um, just in the morning, each time baby um, drops their soother, as we've seen from the research, it can contain very harmful bacteria. So mums need to be making sure that they give the baby a clean soother every time. Um, and, you know, here at Milton, we recommend um, sterilising baby soothers up to the first year of life and especially around six months when baby's immunity is actually at its lowest. Um, so they can regularly wash their hands and keep that soother sterile. Right, brilliant. And where can people go for more information if, if they're sort of unaware of, you know, where the more dangerous bacteria might be harbouring and where it's a definitely a definite requirement to sterilise your dummy once it's been dropped in a certain area. Where can parents go to get some more information on this story so they can help prevent this? OK, parents can um, 
go to the uh, Milton Facebook page and we've got a great team of experts that are you know, ready and waiting to take questions for consumers. We can then pass them back through to Dr Cutler and we can offer any advice, um, any concerns parents have got at all about the research that they've heard. But we really want to um, clarify, there's no need to worry. You know, there are harmful bacteria out there um, and especially soothers. You know, when a soother's wet and it's dropped on the floor, of course it's going to pick up bacteria. But, you know, we're here to sort of say, hang on a minute, you know, parents, as long as they're safely um, sterilising their soother, there's nothing to worry about. And it's really, really simple and um, effective to do. So please feel free to come visit our, our Facebook page and um, to learn more really about how you can protect your baby. Brilliant. And finally, you did mention about the uh, portable sterilisers. Where can parents pick those up from? OK, so the Milton Mini Soother Steriliser can be bought from uh, supermarkets, baby shops and pharmacies, um, you know, in store and online. So it's widely available across the UK. Brilliant. Well, that pretty much covers it all, but I'd like to thank you both for joining me at short, short notice and giving this interview. Brilliant. And thank you ever so much. I think we've covered it. So thank you, Dr. Ronald, and thank you, Tess. A thank pleasure. You. you have a good day. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.